If you are confused about the terminology that hovers over the .NET family, this video is made for you. There is .NET Framework, .NET Core, .NET Standard, ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, and now there is even a new framework coming up, which is called .NET 5. How are these terms related and what do they mean? We will cover all of this in this video. One reason why this might be difficult to grasp is because when I look this up, there are multiple explanations and terms used with .NET Framework. Like, it's a software layer, it is a platform, it is a runtime environment, it provides services and libraries to applications and developers, it provides tools for multiple programming languages. And even though this is not wrong, it is kind of vague and this is really uh, leaving the reader kind of empty. Like, they're not really explaining it in a way that the person can grasp it. If someone asks what is .NET Framework and you tell them that it's a platform that offers services, it does not really tell that much. It is way too broad of a concept. Let's say there is a new programmer who is learning C Sharp. He knows the programming language, he downloaded Visual Studio for Windows machine and made a simple command prompt game where the user has to type something in and then some text comes out. This is pretty much the basic scenario for new developers where they are trying to learn new language. Because everything has been made kind of easy, you don't really have to pay too much attention to these terms. You can just follow along some tutorial, select application type, it's said in the tutorial, and never really bother yourself with this. In this video, I'll try to explain these terms in a way that it will make sense to you, a new developer, in a way that's beneficial to you. So, first some theoretical mumbo-jumbo. Uh, let's start from .NET Framework, which is a developer platform for multiple programming languages, like we discussed before, such as C Sharp, C++, and F Sharp. It has been the main framework for many years for developing apps, websites, and services and it has served its time quite well. The first version came out in 2002. It was called .NET Framework 1.0, and there was a Visual Studio version released back in there as well. It was called Visual Studio .NET because it needed the framework as well for it to work. So that's why the .NET enhancement to the previous version, which was just Visual Studio. So this was the beginning of the symbiosis between Visual Studio and .NET Framework. So, Visual Studio was the main tool for writing .NET programs. You know, we didn't have Visual Studio Code back then. It came much later in 2015. And Visual Studio Code is this lighter version of Visual Studio. But Visual Studio, or just simply VS, is the main IDE used today as well. So, it goes all the way back to 2002. So, let's go to the current day. Even today you need .NET Framework in your machine for the Visual Studio to work properly. It comes with the default download package if you download Visual Studio, no matter what uh, version of it. Like in the Visual Studio 19, there is .NET Framework 4.8, which is the latest .NET Framework in it. But there is something else as well, an alternate framework for .NET Framework, which is called .NET Core. And actually, if you go to Microsoft download page, then there is uh, Visual Studio 19, and there is also like other tools and frameworks. And you can see that you can actually download .NET Framework on its own. And if you decide to download it, you can see that there is two versions of it, like .NET Core and .NET Framework. And why does this matter? Well, if you want to build .NET Core applications, obviously you need .NET Core runtime. So when do you need to know this? If you're like trying out new applications, you need to know what kind of applications you want to build. Maybe you want to target .NET Framework or maybe you want to target .NET Core. One of the key differences between these two is that .NET Core is cross-platform. .NET Core is also open source. There are some downsides to it. Maybe the community is not that well established, so you may not that find help that much often. Also, there might be some tools that are different between the two. So really, as a developer, you should like go through each of them, see what works for you. Of course, for new 
applications. .NET Core is the way to go. .NET Core 3.0 is also the only place where you can write C Sharp 8. So you need .NET Core 3.0 if you want to write the newest version of C Sharp 8. And uh, now I'm going to quickly show you how to build uh, each of these applications in using Visual Studio. So here I have Visual Studio open and I have my solution. I'm just going to quickly uh, add new project. And as you can see, I can select the project type in here. There is the ASP.NET web application and this is targeting for the .NET framework. So you want to choose this if you want to use the .NET framework and if you want to use core then oh it's it's here so then you choose the ASP.NET core web application and one thing I want to like make clear here is that both of these are using ASP.NET but different versions of it so ASP.NET is is this kind of extra feature that is built upon the original framework so the newest version of it is ASP.NET Core, but before that we had ASP.NET. And the ASP.NET was developed in 2002, and there was even a version before that. It was called ASP, uh, Application Server Pages. And it was really built for dynamic web pages. So you don't have to just send static web pages, you can produce the pages dynamically and then just send them to the web client. So it adds this application service next to the web server that really handles all the logic between databases, between other services. Maybe you're getting data from somewhere else as well. So it, it handles that and creates the page and then the server just sends it as if it were a static page. And the web client doesn't need to know about it, how it was created. So that was why ASP was created originally, then there was ASP.NET in 2002, and then there was ASP.NET Core, which is the newest version, and, and ASP.NET Core came out in 2015. So in Visual Studio 2015, you could make ASP.NET Core applications as well. So ASP.NET is really for web applications and for web applications only. So you can like build web pages and web applications and web services using ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core. Of course, the ASP.NET Core is the newest version and it's the recommended version at this moment. So in my example here, I'm not just using .NET Framework or just .NET Core, but I have this extra component that is built on top of them, that is ASP.NET. Obviously, you don't need this if you're developing some other type of application, so this is just for web development. One thing I want to show you is this table that shows you what version of .NET Core you can use with each version of Visual Studio. So if you want to use the newest version of .NET Core, then you have to have the Visual Studio 2019 version and so on. So as a new developer, you you can slowly like start to look these things up and see like, oh, when is the next .NET Core version coming up? And what do I need to do in order to use that? And and what what is the right time to make uh, the leap into that version instead of the version I'm using now? And when do I need to upgrade the Visual Studio and, and so on? So at this moment, there is new framework coming up in next year, a late 2020, and it's called .NET 5. And cool thing about it is that it's, it's open source, it's cross-platform like .NET Core was, and it's really meant to take the best or best. Well, it's meant to take some features from the .NET framework and some from the .NET Core and really just have one framework for everybody, which is called .NET 5. Why it's not called .NET 4 is because, well, .NET framework was called 4 point something and the next would be 4.9 and then 5, I, I guess it could be related to that. In their website they said that they don't want people to get confused with that. So it's like the next thing for both frameworks. As a tool-wise, it, it will work on Visual Studio and in Visual Studio Code as well. 
because it's cross-platform, it will help those people who want to use these frameworks but are using Mac or Linux. Even though I was very focused on Windows machines here, there are tools like Visual Studio for Mac, and because .NET Core is cross-platform, these are not just for for Windows users only. Like there are Summarine and Mono as well that you can use as a tool, so Visual Studio is not the only option. And maybe in the future, when .NET 5 comes up, we have a better system with being cross-platform. Anyway, so, so I hope this gave you a clear understanding of .NET Framework, .NET Core, and uh, ASP.NET Core, as well as the difference between ASP.NET and .NET 5. One thing I want to mention before I let you go is that there is this thing called .NET Standard, which uh, defines all the APIs that are included. So you can see in this table that their latest version of .NET Standard is 2.0 and only the .NET Core is implementing it. .NET Framework is not implementing it. Uh, I think they're trying to catch up, but because they are also so focused on .NET 5, I'm not really sure what is going to happen with that. Is it maybe fixing that as well? And you can see, like I mentioned, there are all these other frameworks like Mono and Summary that are also using the standard. I, I know there are lots of things I didn't say, but this hopefully gave you a like overall view and help you look these things up and maybe focus on like what kind of things you want to develop later. And of course ASP.NET projects are not the only projects you may develop other things with using Visual Studio as well. This was all I wanted to say about this matter. I hope it was useful and I hope you all have a great, great day.